everybody and welcome to Sal's Comic Roundup. I am, of course, Sal from LittleHouseOnline.com. I'm here to talk about one comic in particular, and that's Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. Now, this title I did talk about in a previous episode, and I gave it a real derisive attitude, a really dismissive tone. The fact is, I threw it out completely out of hand because I felt like it was a little disingenuous. I thought they were trying to familiarize audiences with characters from a movie that they're going to be spending millions of dollars on, and I felt that the attempt to put creative team Brian Michael Bendis, who you may be familiar with from Ultimate Spider-Man and his run on Avengers and New Avengers, and Steve McNiven, who you may be familiar with from his art on Civil War and Old Man Logan, was really a little bit of a cash grab. I thought it was a way of taking their superstar artist and writer and just putting them together and saying, if these two can do no wrong, I'm sure people will buy it, and then they'll go see the movie based on it, and the people who go see the movie will pick up the book, and they'll naturally like it because those two people print money for Marvel. And the fact is, the book really isn't bad at all, and it is improved by, in my opinion, the art shift from Steve McNiven to Sarah Pacelli. Now, Sarah Pacelli has done some art for Ultimate Spider-Man for the last several years, and she's never been better, especially on Guardians of the Galaxy. And Brian Michael Bendis' writing on Guardians of the Galaxy is really, really sharp as well, and he's developing a fantastic space opera that I particularly cannot wait to see culminate in the new upcoming Infinity Story for Marvel. Now, there's another member of this creative team that I have not talked about, and the fact is, that's my cross to bear. I should really be talking about these people more, and that's Justin Ponzer on Colors. The guy really brings to life this art, this story, brings the universe, the galaxy, into focus. Now, I have in the past not talked about colorists because, frankly, most people don't talk about the colorists, but the fact is, I'm now working on comics, I'm making them myself, and I recognize the importance of a good colorist. Garth Kirby, Grace Freeman has done an amazing job on my title, Garth Kirby, and I've got another title coming out that I can't really talk about too much, but let me tell you, the coloring brings this thing to full focus, and it really makes it real for me. So. I really am going to try my best as a reviewer to bring more of the creative teams into the limelight. And that's Justin Ponzer doing such a fantastic job. He's done some amazing work for Marvel in the past, and he continues to do so with stuff like Infinity, which I'll talk about in another episode. But back to Guardians of the Galaxy. This title is really fun. It takes all the cosmic elements of Marvel that you're never going to see together in a movie and does interesting things with them. They're all surprising. The idea of taking a ragtag collective of misfits and putting them in a team is not new or wholly original, but what they're doing with it is, in my opinion, unique to Marvel specifically. I think that what the story lacks in narrative focus, it makes up for in character development and character interaction. And that's where I really connect with comics. I really love seeing characters interact. And I will forgive a shoddy story if I have really engaging characters going along with it. The fact is, however, the story is not terribly shoddy. I think that Brian Michael Bendis has made some missteps in the past as far as developing story and then executing that really great idea. But in this case, I think that he's given so much room to breathe and so much space to work with, no pun intended, of course, uh, I think that he will deliver on the promise of this story, this long-reaching arc. I love the idea of taking the Earth and making it into this beautiful yet dangerous element that's part and ever-present in this story. So I don't want to get too deep into the details because I want you to go check it out and pick it up for yourself. But the fact is, you may consider what I have done flip-flopping. I had an opinion, I shared it with everybody, and then I went back and I'm like, I gotta change my opinion because the fact is, I'm wrong. And I don't consider it that. I think that's just taking new information, considering it in your head, and then formulating a new opinion. And I hope my opinions will be influenced by new information for the rest of my life. And I have a question for all of you, and I'd love you to share your opinions in the comments below this video, and that is, is there a comic out there that you hated or didn't really care for in the beginning, but then gave another look to and said, hey, this is actually really fun, I really like this? And if so, what comic was it? Uh, if you haven't ever done that or haven't ever had that experience, I urge you to go into your collection, go into your long boxes, go into your Comixology digital downloads, and take a look at some books that you said, eh, I'm not really digging on this, and give it another look. We have an initial reactions for a reason, and I think that some of those are founded, but sometimes we are 
a little too judgmental, and I know that I'm definitely guilty of it, so consider that in your comic reading in the future. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I'm Sal from LittleHouseOnline.com and Sal's Comic Roundup. Don't forget to like this video or subscribe to the channel. You can do so by clicking the little house in the corner of the video at the end. And, of course, check out more episodes of Sal's Comic Roundup and more episodes of stuff from this channel, TV Little House. And I want to thank everybody for watching, and we'll see you next time on not only Sal's Comic Roundup, but LittleHouseOnline.com. <laughs>